What's up my friend, Abby here, and welcome back to Writer's Life Wednesdays, where we come together to help you make your story matter and make your author dreams come true. Do you struggle with writing platonic relationships in your story? Do you ever find yourself asking questions like, how do I write a friendship that feels realistic and lived in? You want your reader to feel like they're walking in on a cast of characters who have known each other forever. And it has that lived in feeling of like, we just showed up, but the characters have been here for a long time and they already have built layers of conflict with each other and layers of relationships, whether those relationships are between parents or friends or siblings or teachers or their boss or their bully or their ex-friend. That's why in today's video, we are exploring six powerful ways to make your character's platonic relationships shine so that your story will be more genuine, relatable, and memorable. Why does your story matter? Good question. What if I told you that there's a science behind every great story? I don't just teach you how to write. I teach you how to change the world with your story and make your author dreams come true. Okay, first things first, what you're going to want to do is describe your main character's relationship with this other character in a few words. So this is where I always start with plotting my character relationships is I first figure out what is this other character to the main character? Because the main character is the most important person in the story. They are the measuring device that we use to measure the importance of everything that's going to happen in the story. So that being said, they are the point of reference for figuring out what these relationships in the story mean. So you can start this process with any of your side characters that you want to start with, but I would recommend starting with the most important side character if you can name one, and starting by figuring out what is the relationship to the main character, why do they matter, where have they been in the past. If you want to start sketching some backstory, feel free to do that, but we're going to dive deeper into that throughout this process. So for now, you can just keep it short and sweet. Just quickly describe to yourself what this other character means to the protagonist. Also, while you're doing this exercise, I find it can be helpful to use example stories. So if you're writing a relationship dynamic that kind of reminds you of a relationship you've seen in a book, movie, TV show before, you can reference that in your own mind and in your own notes to yourself so that you can gain inspiration from the different ingredients and chemistry that goes into making that particular relationship that you like so much, what makes it dynamic. Number two, what are some points of conflict in the relationship? Conflict, as we all know, is the heart and soul of a story. So how do these two characters have conflict together? How do they clash in different ways? How do they balance each other and contrast each other? At this point, you can look at your different character profiles for your characters and see some of their beliefs and internal conflicts and their desires and personality types. And looking at your character's differences will help you to identify some of those points of conflict where maybe one of them believes something really strongly that the other character disagrees with. Or perhaps they've had conflicts in the past that have turned into arguments and debates and feuds that went on into the future and now these two characters always clash over this one topic or this one belief that they both cannot agree on. This will be different for every story and every character, so take your time and really think about it. How do these two characters have conflict together? Because this is going to springboard all the conflict they're going to have in the book whether they're setting aside their past differences to face a new challenge, or they're confronting their past differences to get through those differences and come out the other side with a new understanding of each other. Number three, what do they agree on and what do they disagree on? Just like with the conflict, we have to find similarities as well because we have to find those points where the characters have camaraderie, they have commonalities with each other. Even two characters who seem like they are polar opposites will have things in common. 
And a lot of times it's those things that help them to navigate the story together, help them to get along, whether they are friends or foes. A lot of times this is really fun with sibling dynamics. So one of my favorite types of platonic relationships to write is siblings, particularly brothers. And I really love the dynamic of knowing somebody so well that you have these common things with them that you do fundamentally agree on, but you also are very different from them in that you have constant conflict on like a daily basis in small ways, but you always overcome that conflict because of the deeper connection you have with this person, because you have a relationship that is stronger than the petty disagreements. So figure out what your characters agree on, what they disagree on, and use those elements to add more nuanced layers of conflict to your story. Before we continue to point number four, I just want to interrupt myself quickly to tell you guys that I'm going to be hosting a special live training this weekend, diving even deeper into this topic. So in this video, I'm just sharing some quick and dirty tips, ways that you can make your reader more emotionally invested in the relationships in your story. But if you want to dive even deeper into this topic and take your story to the next level, this live training is for you. Whether you're writing parent-child dynamics or friends or siblings or brothers in arms or even enemies, I've got you covered. In this live training, you will learn the science-based principles behind writing believable and dynamic character relationships, conflict building prompts for every relationship in your story, parents, friends, mentors, siblings, enemies, and more. The ultimate platonic relationship mind map, customizable for your cast of characters. How to mine your character's backstory for relationship building gold. Conflict ideas to leverage new plots and challenges for your characters to overcome. And tons of story examples to help you visualize these principles in action. So if you want to take your story to the next level and make your readers fall in love with the relationships between the characters in your story, you don't want to miss this live training. It's happening Sunday, July 30th at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And if you can't make it to the live stream, don't worry. You will have access to watch the replay as many times as you want. Also, when you sign up, you get access to all my previous live trainings. So that's over a dozen live trainings, all diving deep into writing and publishing topics. Truly a vault of literary gold in the live training pass level of my Patreon. So click the link below to get access right now and watch the live training upcoming this Sunday on writing platonic relationships. I think you'll love it. Okay, let's carry on with our question prompts. Number four, do they keep any secrets from each other? If so, what and why? Secrets can be a really powerful tool in storytelling, especially when it comes to creating strong relationships. What we decide not to tell someone or decide to tell someone and only that one person says a lot about our relationship with them. And it says a lot about the character's progression on their journey. Maybe one character has a dark past or something in their past that they don't feel comfortable sharing with anyone. But along their journey, they begin to confide in one of the characters about this secret part of themselves. Or maybe one of the characters is wrestling with conflicted feelings and they just don't feel ready to share those feelings with anyone. Why are they keeping those thoughts and emotions back? Why are they hiding something from this other character? Secrets are kind of like subtext. They're like that special ingredient that really brings the story to a whole new level because it's what we don't say that usually means more than what we say. Number five, how did they meet and how long have they known each other? Okay, now we're getting into the backstory element of this. If you want to write the backstory before any of these prompts, that's totally up to you. But if you haven't written any backstory yet, I urge you to take a peek into these characters' pasts get together and see if you can find some 
foundations to their relationship. Did they get off to a rocky start or did they become fast friends? Have they always known each other? Have they known each other since childhood or did they meet as adults? How was that first meeting for them? What was it like? What were their first impressions of each other? Relationship backstory is like a super tool in your writerly tool belt because when you are writing the present moment of these characters and their relationship, we can reference things that happened in the past that the reader didn't see but is seeing now through the lens of our characters' perceptions and their memories and how they perceived the past. It's even more powerful than seeing something objectively because how we remember something says a lot about how we saw it, right? It says a lot about how we perceived it, what we think about it to this day, or even how our current views have reshaped what really happened in the past. So take a little time to sketch out maybe a backstory scene or a first impressions scene for these two characters. When they first met, what were their impressions of each other? Or if they've known each other for an extended period of time, maybe since childhood, how have their opinions been forged in the fire of this relationship over time? Writing an actual backstory scene for these characters will help you also to create golden banter because we can actually reference things and make private jokes, which I absolutely love. Private jokes are so underrated. They're almost as underrated as platonic relationships. Like, can we just please have more books with healthy, amazing platonic relationships and great private jokes slash banter? And finally, last but not least, number six, how will your character's relationship change over the course of the story? This one is arguably the most fun because it factors into your actual story's timeline and your character arcs. How our characters change reflects upon their relationships as well. If they change, everything around them in their world is changing because their transformation is having a direct impact on their relationships. So how are these characters gonna change? Are, is it for the better or <laughs> is it more in a negative character arc direction? Are they going to drift apart or come closer together? Is their conflict going to come to a head or are they going to avoid their conflicts or overcome their conflicts, set aside the past, maybe set aside their differences in order to complete a challenge together? How is that going to change their relationship? This is one of the most important questions, I think, to ask yourself about character relationships and a question that I always reflect upon while I am outlining and writing any story. Looking at the characters at the beginning of the story versus the characters at the end and how their relationships have changed. This is a really beautiful, subtle way to incorporate theme and message into your story without being preachy or overly pushy with your theme because relationships evolve naturally and if they are well written in a story they should feel natural and we can look at the relationship at the end of the story and reflect upon how much it has changed since the beginning just simply through the characters interactions through the way they speak to each other through how they see each other and treat each other and we can contrast the beginning with the end and see that transformation Okay, boom, that's it. The six very important questions that I ask myself when I am starting to write a new platonic relationship in a book. I hope that you wrote these questions down and enjoyed brainstorming over them and sort of digging for the gold that's already there in your characters waiting to be found if you want to take your platonic relationships to the next level. You don't want to miss my live training. It's happening this Sunday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and it's all about taking your platonic relationships, whether they be parents, siblings, friends, ex-friends, boss, employee, mentors, enemies even, taking all those relationships, the, the non-romantic relationships in your book, to that next level. I'm going to be sharing lots of techniques and resources and story examples with you guys. I think you're going to love it. So if you don't want to miss that training, click the link below this video to save your spot. Space is limited, so I hope to see you over there and I can't wait to dig deeper into this topic with you. Smash that like button if you liked this video and be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already because I post writing videos every single Wednesday and I would love to have you here in the community. Until next week, my friend, rock on.
Shoo.